Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Abi Shreya, please do this. Share the only for all of the families. Sorry, I forgot. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Let's get this to share. Bismillah. And today we are going to discuss chapter number uh, 18, nuclear physics. And the topic of our discussion is radioactivity. You know, radioactivity is that process in which an unstable nucleus releases some energy in form of subatomic particles in form of some rays to get stability. that process in which an unstable element releases energy in form of subatomic particles or in form of gamma rays to attain stability known as radio activity you know uh, subatomic uh, particles you know are uh, what subatomic particles can be electron proton and neutrons and uh, gamma rays also showing you some uh, in form of energy okay gamma rays are in form of energy we'll discuss in detail Okay, so spontaneous release of some atomic particles or gamma rays by unstable elements. After that, they form new nuclei, and uh, to attain stability, the radioactivity phenomena take place. Okay, so uh, we can say that spontaneous release of some atomic particles or gamma rays by unstable atoms, as their nuclei tend to break into other particles to attain stability, is known as radioactivity. Now, what are radioactive elements? All those elements whose atomic number is greater than 82, they will be considered as radioactive elements. All those elements whose atomic number is greater than 82, they will be considered as radioactive elements, and they are highly unstable to attain stability. They do what? They perform radioactivity of phenomena or invasive process. Now, radioactive elements are of two types: natural radioactive elements and artificial radioactive elements. Natural radioactive elements are those elements whose atomic numbers are already greater than uh, 82. For example, uranium, thorium, polonium, radium, radon, etc. These are natural radioactive elements. And what are artificial radioactive elements? Artificial radioactive elements are those elements which are not radioactive. But we make them radioactive by making them unstable, by pouring energy on it, by giving temperature to it, by providing some external source of energy to them. We make them unstable. When they become unstable, automatically they release some energy from them to get stability. So those elements are called artificial radioactive elements. For example, it includes sulfur, nitrogen, phosphorus, carbon, and lot more. Okay. Now we discuss uh, experimental work. Okay. If we place a radioactive sample, for example, radon, in a electric field, what kind of behavior it shows? If we uh, place a radioactive sample in magnetic field, what kind of behavior it shows? Now, look. For example, we are discussing radioactive sample. We have taken radon in. magnetic field we have taken radon in magnetic field okay look we have taken radioactive sample over here like this this is a lead container in which we have taken radioactive sample for example we have taken a radioactive sample over here that radioactive sample is radon r n radioactive sample okay now magnetic field is provided this magnetic field is into the page for here like this into okay magnetic field or here is into the page into the paper or you may say into the page now this is we are having a uh, Screen, or you may say, fluorescent screen, candle, or any other screen which can detect these particles, right? Okay, this is what photographic plate. This is photographic plate. Okay, and this whole chamber is enclosed in a box. Okay, and this is lead cylinder. Okay. Now, what happens? 
look, we have observed that alpha particles will move at the top over here like this. This unstable element will release some energy in form of gamma rays and in form, in form of alpha, beta and gamma rays and in form of some subatomic particles. So we have observed that there will be a particle or a particle which is moving upward. We will call that alpha particle. It is represented by this symbol. This is what alpha. And another ray will come, another particle will come and it will move down. It will be showing as beta. Its symbol is this. Beta and there is third ray or a third a particle, you can put not a particle but a ray, what we call gamma ray, it will show you no deviation, it will come very straight over here. Like this, this is what this is gamma. Okay, this is what this is gamma. Now, this was whole evacuated channel. Okay, this was what this was evacuated. Channel. Okay, now coming this was radiative sample in magnetic field. Now we are discussing the same radiative sample in electric field. Radioactive sample in electric field. Okay, the same uh, radioactive sample we are having and we are discussing in electric field. Now we can uh, edit it. Look. Radioactive sample in electric field. Okay, the same type of setup we are having, and now we are placing okay, we are placing two plates parallel to each other. First plate negative plate and other plate is positive plate, right? In between we are having in electric field. In between we are having what? Electric field over here. In between these two plates we are having electric field. At the same radio, uh, same radio to some color we call radar is placed over here and we will observe that the same three type of rays will come or you can say particles will come and it will strike the photographic plate or you may say screen. The first, it will move up, okay, and it will be called as what? It will be called as alpha and second will move down or here like this and it will show you beta and third will show you no deviation. This is what we call alpha, sorry, gamma. It is represented by this sample. Okay, so we have discussed uh, radioactive sample in electric field and we have discussed radioactive sample in magnetic field. Okay, now coming towards nature of emission. Like what is nature of emission of these particles? Like what is alpha, what is beta and what is gamma? So we are going to discuss it in detail over here. Okay, now I am raising uh, this side. Nature of emission of alpha, beta, and gamma. Nature of emissions first for alpha. Alpha emission. You know, alpha is basically the nucleus of helium, or you can say the nuclei of helium. Alpha is represented by this cell. Alpha is doubly positive charge, right? As helium, helium atomic number is 2 and atomic mass is 4. Okay, alpha is what they are helium nucleus. Alpha has doubly positive charge. Okay, now uh, what is beta or what is beta emission? Now, let me discuss an example over here. For example, if uh, from an element alpha is released, look for example, we are having x an element, right? And it has atomic number z and atomic mass a. If it releases alpha, new element will form and the atomic number of that new element will decrease by 2 and atomic mass will decrease by 4. Why? Because helium or uh, uh, because helium has atomic number 2 and atomic mass by 
4. So we can say that if in, uh, any element we are having x whose atomic number is 7 and atomic mass is a, if it releases alpha, so new element will form and atomic number will be decreased by 2 and atomic mass will be decreased by 4. And for here alpha will be emitted. Okay? Now coming towards what is beta emission? What is beta emission? Basically, beta is showing you a single electron. Beta is showing you what? A single electron and beta has a negative charge on it. Okay? Beta OR electron. Electron has just negative charge on it. For example, if a certain element releases beta, for example, we are having a certain element X, atomic number Z and atomic mass A. If it releases beta, so new element will form. Do remember the electron has no concern, nothing no connection with atomic mass. So the new element's atomic mass will not change. Now, atomic number of that new forming element will increase by 4. Why? Because loss of electron shows is shown by a positive sign. So positive one will be written over here. If certain elements release a single beta uh, element, or you can say particle, so atomic number of that element will be like plus one or there you will, you will add plus one over here because loss of electron uh, shows you what plus uh, is, is shown by a plus sign. Okay, and that is beta emitted or released beta. Okay, beta is what? Beta is only showing you a single electron and loss of electron is shown by a plus sign. So if from an element beta is released, so its atomic number will be increased by only one plus one and atomic mass will not change because atomic mass definition is the sum of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. There is no connection of electron uh, with atomic mass. Okay. Now coming towards gamma. Gamma emission. You know, gamma is shown by this sign. Uh, you know, symbol. Gamma is not a particle. Gamma is showing you just an energy. It is in form of electromagnetic wave. Gamma is not a particle. Gamma cannot make any new element. Okay? Like in the first two cases, we are forming over here a new element. But the case of gamma is very different. Gamma is not a particle, it is an electromagnetic wave which is in form of energy. So, gamma emission from an element can only convert the element from unstable state to a stable state only. It cannot bring and it cannot form any new element. Okay? For example, we are having an element X with atomic number A, atomic mass with atomic number Z and atomic mass A. Or here the same element will be formed. Or here new element will uh, not a new element will be formed and gamma rays will be released. But do remember, initially it was unstable, but now it will become what? It will become stable. Okay, initially it was having a star on it. Star or static shows you unstability. Now the same element become what? Stable. Okay, this was the emission of all these alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay. And uh, now discussing with relative ionizing ability and relative penetrating ability. I'm raising this sign. Relative ionizing ability and relative penetrating ability. Shell of a certain element is not known as ionization. Okay, so if we come 
calculate the alpha as an integer of alpha beta and gamma so we will write alpha greater than beta or greater than gamma now coming towards the relative penetrating ability if we compare the relative penetrating ability of alpha beta and gamma so we will understand that gamma's penetrating ability is very greater than beta beta's penetrating ability is very greater than alpha okay means beta can be penetrated into very deep and uh, sorry well, gamma gamma can be penetrated into very deep beta can be penetrated up to intermediate level and alpha can be uh, alpha alpha's penetrating power is very less if we see the diagram for here uh, figure page uh, figure 18.4 page number 239 page number 239 and if we see figure 18.4 if you see figure 18.4 it's very clearly shown over there that alpha even cannot pass through a paper while beta can pass through a paper but cannot pass through the aluminum foil gamma can pass through paper also aluminum foil also and lead or concrete or there it will it, uh, it can reach over there okay clear okay So this was all about today's lecture, and uh, let me summarize today's work. What we have done in today's lecture, we have discussed about radioactivity. We have discussed uh, what is radioactivity, what are radioactive elements, what are the natural radioactive elements, which are uh, artificial radioactive elements, and then we have discussed that when uh, whenever we have been discussed an experiment over there, that when a radioactive sample is placed in electric field, uh, what kind of behavior it shows, and what sort of Rays or what sort of what sort of particles it releases whenever alpha or whenever radioactive sample is placed in a electric field and magnetic field what kind of behavior it shows what kind of particles it emits and what is the nature of it right okay then we discussed the uh, then we discussed nature of emission of alpha uh, like alpha emission we have discussed we have discussed beta emission we have discussed gamma emission and we have discussed also relative penetrating ability of alpha beta and gamma 